To Bangladesh, which will hold parliamentary elections on Sunday. Opposition and rights groups say the vote can be neither free nor fair, and they accuse the current government of carrying out a brutal crackdown, arbitrarily jailing thousands of opposition party leaders and activists. The longest serving female prime minister in the world. Sheikh Hasina has been Bangladesh's head of government since 2009. The leader of the ruling Awami League party will further consolidate her power after the elections on January 7. The main opposition, Bangladesh Nationalist Party or BNP, is boycotting the contest. Thousands of BNP leaders, members and supporters have been jailed on what the party says are politically motivated charges. Human rights groups and activists are warning about the erosion of democracy under Hasina. But the powerful prime minister is undeterred. One reason is influential neighbour, India. The fastest growing economy in the region, India holds considerable political and diplomatic clout over Dhaka. In the past couple of years, our relationship on all important matters has grown stronger. Today, Bangladesh is India's biggest development partner. Modi also sees Bangladesh as a business ally and important for its security, especially to contain the threat of terrorism in its northeastern states. India says security deteriorated there when the BNP was in charge. Another powerful partner is China. It is heavily investing in infrastructure and defence projects in Bangladesh. Dhaka's hunger for development is helping China expand its footprint in the Indo-Pacific. A goal Russia is pursuing too. It is investing in energy projects. Russian president spoke during the inauguration of a Russian-backed nuclear power plant. Bangladesh is our tested ally and partner. Our relations are built on the basis of mutual respect, equality and benefits. China, Russia and India have largely stayed silent on European and US criticism, especially from the American administration over Hasina's human rights record. The U.S. State Department announced visa restrictions in September on anyone undermining the electoral process in Bangladesh. With regional powers on its side, Sheikh Hasina is shrugging off any criticism of how she is handling things at home. Let's look at this with Michael Kugelman, who is the South Asia expert and deputy director of the Asia Programme at the Wilson Centre in Washington, D.C. Welcome to DW. So how much credibility will Sunday's elections have if they're being boycotted by the main opposition party? Well, let's be clear. Uh, whenever the top opposition party in an election is not participating in the election, you can't say it's a credible election. Now, uh, Bangladesh's ruling party will say, well, look, we didn't prevent the BNP from participating. We didn't ban it. And that's true. But, you know, we need to understand the conditions that contributed to the BNP decision not to run, uh, essentially a fear that the election would not be credible and that it would be rigged. Uh, not to mention in the last few weeks, as your report noted before, the BNP had been hit hard, very hard by, uh, by crackdowns. And I'll say this, that the BNP boycott uh, really helps the Awami League, not just because it will most certainly win, but now you can't really accuse the Awami League of rigging the election. You know, if the Awami League were to win 95 percent of the vote, you can't accuse it of stealing votes if it's essentially running against itself. Right. So what does this tell us then about the state of Bangladesh's democracy? I would argue that the election is a pivotal test for democracy uh, in Bangladesh. Uh, the last two national elections in 2014 and especially 2018 were viewed by many in the international community as not free and fair. Uh, and I think that if this third consecutive election, uh, if a third consecutive election is judged in that way as well, with the Awami League uh, coming back again for a fourth term, um, third term, pardon me, a fourth term, then, you know, that could mean that many outside Bangladesh in particular and also inside the country 
will view the country as something that's approximating a one-party state. And I also think that there are key implications for some Western countries, especially the U.S., which may well decide to review their future relations with a government in Bangladesh that they believe has not held free and fair elections. And we'll take the U.S. example. What does the U.S. have that Bangladesh wants? Why should Bangladesh care what the U.S. says? Well, I mean, uh, Bangladesh uh, must recognize and does recognize that the U.S. is a top trade partner. It's the top uh, destination for Bangladesh's garment exports as well as Bangladesh's exports on the whole. So I think that the trade relationship is very important for, for Bangladesh, a country that's enjoyed significant levels of economic growth, uh, and including under the, the, uh, the Sheikh Hasina administration. So I think that the commercial partnership is enough to make Bangladesh recognize how important the relationship was with the U.S., but not important enough to prompt Bangladesh to actually heed the pressure that's come from the U.S. government uh, over the last uh, year or so for a free and fair election. I think that that pressure from the U.S. Has, has had very limited success. And so how might Russia and or China uh, fill any a gap left by the US? Well, I think that we've seen all the key players uh, in the region, uh, China as well as India and Russia uh, for that matter, have uh, strengthened relations with Bangladesh in a big way. They have a very strong comfort level with the current government. And of course, the US is on the other side of that. But I don't necessarily think that uh, even if the election is regarded as uh, not free and fair, um, and even if the US decides perhaps to scale down its relations with Bangladesh in a way, that doesn't mean that the US will right. disappear from the scene. The US wants to have a good relationship with Bangladesh. It sees uh, Bangladesh as a key player in its broader Indo-Pacific vision. It okay. wants to try to push back against Chinese and Russian. Thank you so Bangladesh much. As well. so we'll leave it there. Thank you so Thank much, you. Michael Kugelman from the, the Wilson Center. Thank you.